we joined by two very special guests, Rajan Matthews, who represents the telecos here on the show, and Nikhil Pava, founder of Media Nama, and a man who's been advocating net neutrality for a very long time now. Thanks very much, both of you, for being with us. Nikhil, I'm going to begin with you. Uh, the report is out, and uh, you've heard this firsthand exclusively on ET now. Uh, does the panel within the telecom department completely toe the telco's line at this point in time? Well, you know, uh, when I first heard about this uh, story that ET now is broken, my, the first reaction my, 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 that I had was, I hope they're wrong. I hope this is not the right report. The, 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 uh, the minister hasn't yet released a report, but the signals coming in from your story are absolutely the worst possible uh, thing that I could have ever expected. Uh, licensing of any app or communication companies is just completely uncalled for. I hope that never happens. The kind of damage it will do to the internet in this country um, in terms of just impacting how we communicate. I mean, how many of your users want to uh, uh, want a license for WhatsApp or want a license for uh, any form of uh, messaging or calling company. That will add costs to their business. Those costs will be transferred to us. And then it will mean also that if any Indian entrepreneur wants to create an app to compete with them, they will have to go to the government and buy a license for it. This whole uh, same surface, same rules idea is completely fallacious. I just hope that this is not the actual thing. I hope this is wrong. Um, because it also goes against, in a sense, what the minister himself said in terms of supporting net neutrality. Uh, it also goes against what, for example, uh, Mr. Tarun Vijay, member of the BJP, had said about wanting uh, a bill of uh, rights for the internet. You know, nowhere, uh, if, if you look at it, all, uh, all the strong democracies, strong, strong economies, except China perhaps, have a situation where there is no licensing for the internet and that freedom which entrepreneurs have to communicate to to basically remix different types of communications uh, that's what's given us this wonderful medium and imagine that being restricted for the rest of uh, the future uh, of everyone who's going to come online in in india i just can't uh, i just hope it's wrong all right rajan mathis comment on this i'm sure you're hoping this is all right do you believe this report is clearly, uh, you know, towing the line that telecom operators wanted? We have always made the proposition that uh, the same services uh, should be governed by the same rules. So if this really addresses that particular issue of ours, then yes, I think it goes in the right direction. We have never asked that uh, OTT players be regulated or licensed or all of that. We basically said that light, light touch regulation is what is required and we've pushed for that. So we'll wait to see how this translates in terms of making sure that there is an equal uh, and level playing field between people who offer similar services. But, you know, Nikhil, your point of same services, same rules being wrong is exactly what telecom operators have contested. They say, how can players who offer similar services be subject to different rules? They spend uh, one set of operators, the telecom operators spend a lot of money on spectrum, on building networks. How can there be a different level playing field? How do you, uh, you know, how, how would you retort this argument? Well, if you look at it, uh, isn't there a situation, for example, you're running uh, ET Now as a TV channel and... Uh, uh, many of the telecom operators offer video services on their platforms. Shouldn't they have to buy a video license then? Uh, I mean, there are, uh, uh, if you look at it, there are FM licenses for radios. Shouldn't uh, those people, uh, sh shouldn't telecom operators have to buy something like an FM license? The same service, same rules can be expanded even to include, for example, detailing of wallpapers and ringtones as mobile VAS on their platforms. Uh, that's e-commerce and uh, if you look at it, most of almost every telecom operator from Airtel to Vodafone, whatever, is it's majority owned by uh, th through FDI. Shouldn't then they be uh, under the FDI rules of e-commerce? The same service, same rules can extend to everything. Frankly, b both VOIP, I mean VOIP and regular phone calling are completely different services. Uh, VOIP is much richer, it is more versatile, it can be integrated into different apps. It is a part, for example, there are gamers who talk to each other while gaming. Even if you look at messaging, messaging is, a co is core to the fabric of the internet. All of that is a part of the internet. What you're trying to say is that we should slice off a part of one thing that people do on the internet that is integral to everything that you do on the internet and then create a license for it. That will kill all innovation. And imagine if there's a situation, if there is 
you know, an, an Indian entrepreneur makes an app like this. Um, imagine if there is a reciprocal move from other countries in the world. If they start creating this licensing regime, you don't want this sort of licensing for the internet. There is it need, there needs to be a global approach because it is a singular space across the globe. There is competition and there is contribution from people in every single country in the world without any roadblocks and that's why it's such a rich space. We want Digital India. This is going to destroy Digital India if you have a situation of licensing for any service on the internet. The telecom operators are making money online. They are making more and more and more money with, with data. Today they make more money on mobile data than they were making, than they've, than they've ever made on mobile value added services. There is no danger. They themselves have said it's not a danger. Himanshu Kampanya, the MD of Ideal Cellular, said on a conference call, he told investors there is no danger of VOIP cannibalizing our own services. And they said they've done tests for this. So what are we trying to protect? Why are we trying to bring in this licensing? I just don't get it. All right, you've ruffled a few feathers there, Nikhil, because I'm going to throw this to Rajan Matthews right here. Rajan, just to take the same argument that you made, uh, same service, same rules, it's been thrown back at you. Telecom service providers do a lot that borders on rules that govern television and FM channels. Should you be governed by the same rules then? No, I don't think this is an issue of the freedom of internet argument because we have said all along that we absolutely support net neutrality and the components of net neutrality. So I think uh, comparing this to an FM radio station or the licensing, we have far more onerous if you will, regulation requirements. FM radio stations don't pay for spectrum upfront in the magnitude that we pay. They don't have license fee payments at 8%. They don't have SEC payments. They don't have legal enforcement connectivity requirements. So I think the requirements are very, very different. And so really uh, comparing apples and oranges in terms of trying to compare us to FM radio stations. But in a world with free internet, Mr. Matthews, won't regulating web-based applications really stifle the freedom one just has had on the net? I mean, freedom that both you and I have enjoyed all this while. I don't think so, because again, let's just make sure what it is that we are asking for. There are really three uh, items that are under license requirements. One is obviously the voice, one is messaging, and video that uh, has embedded in it messaging and voice. Those are the three components. Now, the government has chosen to license that and to extract payments relative to the licensing. We are very happy if the government should come to us and say, hey, listen, those guys can get to do it for free. You guys get to do it for free. We'll be happy to play on that uh, playing field. But unfortunately, that's not where we are. The government, for whatever reason, has chosen to uh, sort of require that be bounded. And so we are all saying, look, same rules, same service. That's all we are asking for. Well, it's a tough one, isn't it? But not sure if uh, if that argument holds, uh, uh, Mr. Matthews. But let's talk about some of the other aspects in the report that's broken exclusively on ET. Now, Nikhil, traffic management has been left to telcos. Uh, isn't that important? Or do you believe this may lead to discrimination between uh, uh, apps and providers? We could see more like the zero rating platform that we saw uh, that was pretty controversial. What's your view on this? So the way I see it is traffic management is essential to maintain the sanctity of the network to make sure the network works and functions. And there might be instances where certain types of traffic is, is, uh, is so heavy that it ensures that other services don't work. In that case, in order to make sure that the networks remain active, I think legitimate traffic management is not a problem. It's about how do we monitor uh, the telecom operators to ensure that they aren't using it in a predatory manner and preventing uh, internet startups from actually trying uh, from, from from running proper businesses or from being able to reach their consumers uh, you don't want a situation where telecom operators start blackmailing companies and telling them that you know we won't uh, serve your traffic just because uh, you don't pay us and that's an issue for example that was there with in case of the US with Netflix and Comcast when Netflix found that it's uh, the speed of access to Netflix services was actually reduced by Comcast at a time when they were negotiating. In India, there's also been throttling of traffic that has happened. We need proper traffic management, but we also need monitoring of it. You see, the telecom operators have exclusive access to the spectrum by virtue of the auctions that they won, but we haven't given it to them. We've licensed it to them. And therefore, as citizens of this country and with the government as a care care caretaker of that spectrum, I think we have the right to impose certain restrictions to ensure that they don't start stifling the growth of the internet in this country 
or of the growth of internet startups in this country. Nikhil Rajan, I'm afraid we are completely out of time, and so we're going to thank uh, that. Uh, thank both of you for joining in with that perspective. This is a heated debate uh, on the fight for uh, for free internet. One we'll have to wait and see uh, what's the final decision that the government takes. This is, of course, a DOT panel report, and the telecom minister will take a call based on what TRAI also recommends. Thanks for joining in on that big debate.